We'd like to welcome everyone to the FP Network, where we are loving God, loving people, and treasuring Jesus together. The Book of Nehemiah, Chapter 1, The New Revised Standard Version. The words of Nehemiah, son of Hakaliah. In the month of Kislev, in the twentieth year, while I was in Susa, the capital, one of my brothers, Hanani, came with certain men from Judah, and I asked them about the Jews that survived, those who had escaped the captivity, and about Jerusalem. They replied, The survivors there in the province who escaped captivity are in great trouble and shame. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and its gates have been destroyed by fire. When I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days, fasting and praying before the God of heaven. I said, O Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant that I now pray before you day and night for your servants, the people of Israel, confessing the sins of the people of Israel, which we have sinned against you. Both I and my family have sinned. We have offended you deeply, failing to keep the commandments, the statutes, and the ordinances that you commanded your servant Moses. Remember the word that you commanded your servant Moses. If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the peoples. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though your outcasts are under the farthest skies, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place at which I have chosen to establish my name. They are your servants and your people whom you redeemed by your great power and your strong hand. O Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give success to your servant today and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. At the time, I was cupbearer to the king. Chapter 2 In the month of Nisan, the twentieth year of King Artaxerxes, when wine was served him, I carried the wine and gave it to the king. Now I had never been sad in his presence before. So the king said to me, Why is your face sad since you are not sick? This can only be sadness of the heart. Then I was very much afraid. I said to the king, May the king live forever. Why should my face not be sad when the city, the place of my ancestors' graves, lies waste and its gates have been destroyed by fire? Then the king said to me, What do you request? So I prayed to the God of heaven. Then I said to the king, If it pleases the king and if your servant has found favor with you, I ask that you send me to Judah to the city of my ancestors' graves, so that I may rebuild it. The king said to me, the queen also was sitting beside him, How long will you be gone, and when will you return? So it pleased the king to send me, and I set him a date. Then I said to the king, If it pleases the king, let letters be given me to the governors of the province beyond the river, that they may grant me passage until I arrive in Judah, and a letter to Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, directing him to give me timber to make beams for the gates of the temple fortress, and for the wall of the city, and for the house that I shall occupy. And the king granted me what I asked, for the gracious hand of my God was upon me. Then I came to the governors of the province beyond the river, and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent officers of the army and cavalry with me, when Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the Ammonite official heard this, it displeased them greatly that someone had come to seek the welfare of the people of Israel. 
So I came to Jerusalem and it was there for three days. Then I got up during the night, I and a few men with me. I told no one what my God had put into my heart to do for Jerusalem. The only animal I took was the animal I rode. I went out by night by the valley gate, past the dragon spring and to the dung gate. And I inspected the walls of Jerusalem that had been broken down and its gates that had been destroyed by fire. Then I went on to the fountain gate and to the king's pool, but there was no place for the animal I was riding to continue. So I went up by way of the valley by night and inspected the wall. Then I turned back and entered by the valley gate and so returned. The officials did not know where I had gone or what I was doing. I had not yet told the Jews, the priests, the nobles, the officials, and the rest that were to do the work. Then I said to them, You see the trouble we are in, how Jerusalem lies in ruins with its gates burned? Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem so that we may no longer suffer disgrace. I told them that the hand of my God had been gracious upon me and also the words that the king had spoken to me. Then they said, Let us start building. So they committed themselves to the common good. But when Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the Ammonite official and Geshem the Arab heard of it, they mocked and ridiculed us, saying, What is this that you are doing? Are you rebelling against the king? Then I replied to them, The God of heaven is the one who will give us success, and we his servants are going to start building, but you have no share or claim or historic right in Jerusalem. Chapter 3 Then the high priest Eliashib set to work with his fellow priests and rebuilt the sheep gate. They consecrated it and set up its doors. They consecrated it as far as the tower of the hundred and as far as the tower of Hananel. And the men of Jericho built next to him and next to them Zachor son of Imri built. The sons of Hassaniah built the fish gate. They laid its beams and set up its doors, its bolts, and its bars. Next to them, Merimoth, son of Uriah, son of Hakaz, made repairs. Next to them, Meshulam, son of Berechiah, son of Mehezabel, made repairs. Next to them, Zadok, son of Beana, made repairs. Next to them, the Tekoites made repairs, but their nobles would not put their shoulders to the work of their Lord. Jehoiada, son of Paseah, and Meshulam, son of Besodea, repaired the old gate. They laid its beams and set up its doors, its bolts, and its bars. Next to them, repairs were made by Melatiah the Gibeonite, and Jadon the Moronothite the men of Gibeon and of Mizpah, who were under the jurisdiction of the governor of the province beyond the river. Next to them, Uziel, son of Herhea, one of the goldsmiths, made repairs. Next to him, Hananiah, one of the perfumers, made repairs. And they restored Jerusalem as far as the broad wall. Next to them, Rephaiah, son of Hur, ruler of half the district of Jerusalem, made repairs. Next to them, Judea, son of Haramath, made repairs opposite his house, and next to him, Hattush, son of Hashabnia, made repairs. Malchijah, son of Haram, and Hashab, son of Pahath Moab, repaired another section of the Tower of the Ovens. Next to him, Shalom, son of Halohesh, ruler of half the district of Jerusalem, made repairs, he and his daughters. Hanan and the inhabitants of Zenoah repaired the valley gate. They rebuilt it and set up its doors, its bolts, and its bars, and repaired a thousand cubits of the wall as far as the dung gate. Malchijah, son of Rechab, ruler of the district of beth Hakarim, repaired the dung gate. He rebuilt it and set up its doors, its bolts, and its bars. And Shalom, son of kal ruler of the district of Mizpah, repaired the fountain gate. 
He rebuilt it and covered it and set up its doors, its bolts, and its bars. And he built the wall of the pool of Shelah of the king's garden, as far as the stairs that go down from the city of David. After him, Nehemiah, son of Azbuk, ruler of half the district of Beth-zur, repaired from a point opposite the graves of David, as far as the artificial pool and the house of the warriors. After him, the Levites made repairs. Rehum, son of Bani. Next to him, Hashabiah, ruler of half the district of Keilah, made repairs for his district. After him, their kin made repairs. Benui, son of Henadad, ruler of half the district of Keilah. Next to him, Ezer, son of Jeshua, ruler of Mizpah, repaired another section opposite the ascent to the armory at the angle. After him, Baruch, son of Zabai, repaired another section from the angle to the door of the house of the high priest Eliashib. After him, Merimoth, son of Uriah, son of Hakaz, repaired another section from the door of the house of Eliashib to the end of the house of Eliashib. After him, the priests, the men of the surrounding area, made repairs. After them, Benjamin and Hashab made repairs opposite their house. After them, Azariah, son of Maaseah, son of Ananiah, made repairs beside his own house. After him, Benui, son of Henadad, repaired another section, from the house of Azariah to the angle and to the corner. Palal, son of Uzai, repaired opposite the angle and the tower projecting from the upper house of the king at the court of the guard. After him, Padaiah, son of Parash, and the temple servants living on Ophel made repairs up to the point opposite the water gate on the east and the projecting tower. After him, the Tekoites repaired another section opposite the great projecting tower as far as the wall of Ophel. Above the horse gate, the priests made repairs, each one opposite his own house. After them, Zadok, son of Emmer, made repairs opposite his own house. After him, Shemaiah, son of Shechaniah, the keeper of the east gate, made repairs. After him, Hananiah, son of Shelemiah, and Hanan, sixth son of Zalaf, repaired another section. After him, Meshulah, son of Berechiah, made repairs opposite his living quarters. After him, Malchijah, one of the goldsmiths, made repairs as far as the house of the temple servants and of the merchants opposite the muster gate and to the upper room of the corner. And between the upper room of the corner and the sheep gate, the goldsmiths and the merchants made repairs. Chapter 4 Now when Sanballat heard that we were building the wall, he was angry and greatly enraged, and he mocked the Jews. He said in the presence of his associates and of the army of Samaria, What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they restore things? Will they sacrifice? Will they finish it in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish and burned ones at that? Tobiah the Ammonite was beside him, and he said, That stone wall they are building, any fox going up on it would break it down. Hear, O our God, for we are despised. Turn their taunt back on their own heads, and give them over as plunder in a land of captivity. Do not cover their guilt, and do not let their sin be blotted out from your sight, for they have hurled insults in the face of the builders." So we rebuilt the wall, and all the wall was joined together to half its height, for the people had a mind to work. But when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabs and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the repairing of the walls of Jerusalem was going forward and the gaps were beginning to be closed, they were very angry, and all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and to cause confusion in it. So we prayed to our God and set a guard as a protection against them day and night. But Judah said, The strength of the burden bearers is failing, and there is too much rubbish, 
so that we are unable to work on the wall. And our enemies said, They will not know or see anything before we come upon them and kill them and stop the work. When the Jews who lived near them came, they said to us ten times, From all the places where they live, they will come up against us. So in the lowest parts of the space behind the wall in open places, I stationed the people according to their families, with their swords, their spears, and their bows. After I looked these things over, I stood up and said to the nobles and the officials and the rest of the people, Do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, who is great and awesome, and fight for your kin, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. When our enemies heard that their plot was known to us, and that God had frustrated it, we all returned to the wall, each to his work. From that day on, half of my servants worked on construction, and half held the spears, shields, bows, and body armor. And the leaders posted themselves behind the whole house of Judah, who were building the wall. The burden bearers carried their loads in such a way that each labored on the work with one hand and with the other held a weapon. And each of the builders had his sword strapped at his side while he built. The man who sounded the trumpet was beside me. And I said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, The work is great and widely spread out, and we are separated far from one another on the wall. Rally to us wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet. Our God will fight for us. So we labored at the work, and half of them held the spears from the break of dawn until the stars came out. I also said to the people at that time, Let every man and his servant pass the night inside Jerusalem, so that they may be a guard for us by night, and may labor by day. So neither I, nor my brothers, nor my servants, nor the men of the guard who followed me, ever took off our clothes. Each kept his weapon in his right hand. Chapter 5 Now there was a great outcry of the people and of their wives against their Jewish kin. For there were those who said, with our sons and our daughters we are many. We must get grain so that we may eat and stay alive. There were also those who said, We are having to pledge our fields, our vineyards, and our houses in order to get grain during the famine. And there were those who said, We are having to borrow money on our fields and vineyards to pay the king's tax. Now our flesh is the same as that of our kindred, our children are the same as their children, and yet we are forcing our sons and daughters to be slaves, and some of our daughters have been ravished. We are powerless, and our fields and vineyards now belong to others. I was very angry when I heard their outcry and these complaints. After thinking it over, I brought charges against the nobles and the officials. I said to them, You are all taking interest from your own people and I called a great assembly to deal with them, and said to them, As far as we were able, we have bought back our Jewish kindred who had been sold to other nations. But now you are selling your own kin who must then be bought back by us. They were silent and could not find a word to say. So I said, The thing that you are doing is not good. Should you not walk in the fear of our God, to prevent the taunts of the nations, our enemies? Moreover, I and my brothers and my servants are lending them money and grain. Let us stop this taking of interest. Restore to them this very day their fields, their vineyards, their olive orchards, and their houses, and the interest on money, grain, wine, and oil that you have been exacting from them. Then they said, we will restore everything and demand nothing more from them. We will do as you say. And I called the priests and made them take an oath to do as they had promised. I also shook out the fold of my garment and said, So may God shake out every one from house and from property who does not perform this promise. Thus may they be shaken out and emptied. And all the assembly said, Amen and praised the Lord. 
and the people did as they had promised. Moreover, from the time that I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah, from the twentieth year to the thirty-second year of King Artaxerxes, twelve years, neither I nor my brothers ate the food allowance of the governor. The former governors who were before me laid heavy burdens on the people and took food and wine from them, besides forty shekels of silver. Even their servants lorded it over the people, but I did not do so because of the fear of God. Indeed, I devoted myself to the work on this wall and acquired no land, and all my servants were gathered there for the work. Moreover, there were at my table 150 people, Jews and officials, besides those who came to us from the nations around us. Now that which was prepared for one day was one ox and six choice sheep. Also fowls were prepared for me, and every ten days skins of wine in abundance. Yet with all this I did not demand the food allowance of the governor, because of the heavy burden of labor on the people. Remember for my good, O my God, all that I have done for this people. Chapter 6 Now when it was reported to Sanballat, and Tobiah, and to Geshem the Arab, and to the rest of our enemies that I had built the wall, and that there was no gap left in it, though up to that time I had not set up the doors and the gates, Sanballat and Geshem sent to me, saying, Come and let us meet together in one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they intended to do me harm. So I sent messengers to them, saying, I am doing a great work, and I cannot come down. Why should the work stop while I leave it to come down to you? They sent to me four times in this way, and I answered them in the same manner. In the same way, Sanballat, for the fifth time, sent his servant to me with an open letter in his hand. In it was written, It is reported among the nations, and Geshem also says it, that you and the Jews intend to rebel. That is why you are building the wall, and according to this report, you wish to become their king. You have also set up prophets to proclaim in Jerusalem concerning you. There is a king in Judah, and now it will be reported to the king according to these words. So come, therefore, and let us confer together. Then I sent to him, saying, No such things as you say have been done. You are inventing them out of your own mind. For they all wanted to frighten us, thinking, Their hands will drop from the work, and it will not be done. But now, O oh God, strengthen my hands. One day, when I went into the house of Shemaiah, son of Deleah, son of Mehetabel, who was confined to his house, he said, Let us meet together in the house of God, within the temple, and let us close the doors of the temple, for they are coming to kill you. Indeed, tonight they are coming to kill you. But I said, Should a man like me run away? Would a man like me go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. Then I perceived and saw that God had not sent him at all, but he had pronounced the prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. He was hired for this purpose, to intimidate me and make me sin by acting in this way, and so they could give me a bad name, in order to taunt me. Remember Tobiah and Sanballat, O oh my God, according to these things that they did, and also the prophetess Noadiah and the rest of the prophets who wanted to make me afraid. So the wall was finished on the 25th day of the month Elul in 52 days. And when all our enemies heard of it, all the nations around us were afraid and fell greatly in their own esteem, for they perceived that this work had been accomplished with the help of our God. Moreover, in those days, the nobles of Judah sent many letters to Tobiah, and Tobiah's letters came to them, for many in Judah were bound by oath to him because he was the son-in-law of Shechaniah, son of Arah, and his son Jehohanan had married the daughter of Meshulam, son of Berechiah. 
Also they spoke of his good deeds in my presence and reported my words to him. And Tobiah sent letters to intimidate me. Chapter 7 Now when the wall had been built, and I had set up the doors, and the gatekeepers, the singers, and the Levites had been appointed, I gave my brother Hanani charge over Jerusalem, along with Hananiah, the commander of the citadel, for he was a faithful man and feared God more than many. And I said to them, The gates of Jerusalem are not to be opened until the sun is hot. While the gatekeepers are still standing guard, let them shut and bar the doors. Appoint guards from among the inhabitants of Jerusalem, some at their watch posts and others before their own houses. The city was wide and large, but the people within it were few, and no houses had been built. Then my God put it into my mind to assemble the nobles and the officials and the people to be enrolled by genealogy. And I found the book of the genealogy of those who were the first to come back, and I found the following written in it. These are the people of the province who came up out of the captivity of those exiles whom King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon had carried into exile. They returned to Jerusalem and Judah, each to his town. They came with Zerubbabel, Jeshua, Nehemiah, Azariah, Rehemiah, Nehemani, Mordecai, Bilshan, Mispereth, Bigvi, Nehum, Baana. The number of the Israelite people, the descendants of Parash, 2,172. Of Shephatiah, 372. Of Ara, 652. Of Pehath Moab, namely the descendants of Jeshua and Joab, 2,818. Of Elam, 1,254. Of Zatu, 845. Of Zakai, 760. Of Benui, 648. Of Bebi, 628. Of Asgad, 2,322. Of Adonikam, 667. Of Bigvi, 2,067. Of Aden, 655. Of Ater, namely of Hezekiah, 98. Of Hashem, 328. Of Bezai, 324. Of Harif, 112. Of Gibeon, 95. The people of Bethlehem and Natopha, 188. Of Anathoth, 128. Of Beth Asmaveth, 42. Of Kiriath Jearim, Shephira, and Beeroth, 743. Of Ramah and Geba, 621. Of Michmas, 122. Of Bethel and Ai, 123. Of the other Nebo, 52. The descendants of the other Elam, 1,254. Of Haram, 320. Of Jericho, 345. Of Lod, Hadid, and Ono, 721. Of Senea, 3,930. The priests, the descendants of Judea, namely the house of Jeshua, 973. Of Emmer, 1,052. Of Pasher, 1,247. Of Haram, 1,017. The Levites, the descendants of Jeshua, namely of Cadmiel, of the descendants of Hodavah, 74. The singers, the descendants of Asaph, 148. The gatekeepers, the descendants of Shalom, of Ater, of Talman, of Akub, of Hatita, of Shobai, 138. The temple servants, 
the descendants of Ziha, of Hashufa, of Tabaoth, of Kiros, of Sia, of Padan, of Libana, of Hagabah, of Shalmei, of Hanan, of Gidel, of Gehar, of Rhea, of Rezin, of Nicoda, of Gazam, of Uza, of Pasea, of Besei, of Meunim, of Nephushisim, of Bakbuk, of Hakufa, of Harher, of Basleth, of Mehida, of Harsha, of Barkos, of Sisera, of Tima, of Neziah, of Hatipha. The descendants of Solomon's servants, of Sotei, of Sophereth, of Parida, of Jayala, of Darkon, of Gidel, of Shephatiah, of Hattel, of Pokereth Hazabeim, of Ammon. All the temple servants and the descendants of Solomon's servants were 392. The following were those who came up from Telmela, Tel Harsha, Kerub, Adon, and Emmer, but they could not prove that their ancestral houses or their descent, whether they belonged to Israel. The descendants of Deleah, of Tobiah, of Nakoda, 642. Also of the priests, the descendants of Hobeah, of Hakaz, of Barzillai, who had married one of the daughters of Barzillai, the Gileadite, and was called by their name. These sought their registration among those enrolled in the genealogies, but it was not found there, so they were excluded from the priesthood as unclean. The governor told them that they were not to partake of the most holy food until a priest with Urim and Thummim should come. The whole assembly together was 42,360. Besides their male and female slaves, of whom there were 7,000, 337, and they had 245 singers, male and female. They had 736 horses, 245 mules, 435 camels, and 6,720 donkeys. Now some of the heads of ancestral houses contributed to the work. The governor gave to the treasury 1,000 derricks of gold, 50 basins, and 530 priestly robes, and some of the heads of ancestral houses gave into the building fund 20,000 derricks of gold and 2,200 minas of silver. And what the rest of the people gave was 20,000 derricks of gold, 2,000 minas of silver, and 67 priestly robes. So the priests, the Levites, the gatekeepers, the singers, some of the people, the temple servants, and all Israel settled in their towns. When the seventh month came, the people of Israel being settled in their towns. Chapter 8 All the people gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest, Ezra, brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it, facing the square before the water gate, from early morning until midday, in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law, the scribe Ezra stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the purpose, and beside him stood Mattathiah, Shema, Aniah, Uriah, Hilkiah, and Maaseah on his right hand. Padeah, Mishael, Malchijah, Hashem, Hashbadana, Zechariah, and Meshulam on his left hand. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. 
Then they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Also Jeshua, Bani, Sherebiah, Jamin, Akub, Shabbatai, Hodiah, Maaseah, Kalita, Azariah, Jazabad, Hanan, Peleah, the Levites, helped the people to understand the law, while the people remained in their places. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra, the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared, for this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites stilled all the people, saying, Be quiet, for this day is holy. Do not be grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and drink, and to send portions, and to make great rejoicing, because they had understood the words that were declared to them. On the second day, the heads of ancestral houses of all the people, with the priests and the Levites, came together to the scribe Ezra in order to study the words of the law. And they found it written in the law, which the Lord had commanded by Moses, that the people of Israel should live in booths during the festival of the seventh month, and that they should publish and proclaim in all their towns and in Jerusalem as follows. Go out to the hills and bring branches of olive, wild olive, myrtle, palm, and other leafy trees to make booths, as it is written. So the people went out and brought them and made booths for themselves, each on the roofs of their houses and in their courts and in the courts of the house of God and in the square at the water gate and in the square at the gate of Ephraim. And all the assembly of those who had returned from the captivity made booths and lived in them. For from the days of Jeshua, son of Nun, to that day the people of Israel had not done so. And there was very great rejoicing. And day by day, from the first day to the last day, he read from the book of the law of God. They kept the festival seven days, and on the eighth day there was a solemn assembly according to the ordinance. Chapter 9 Now on the twenty-fourth day of this month, the people of Israel were assembled with fasting and in sackcloth and with earth on their heads. Then those of Israelite descent separated themselves from all foreigners and stood and confessed their sins and the iniquities of their ancestors. They stood up in their place and read from the book of the law of the Lord their God for a fourth part of the day, and for another fourth they made confession and worshipped the Lord their God. Then Jeshua, Bani, Kadmiel, Shebaniah, Bunai, Sherebiah, Bani, and Canaanai stood on the stairs of the Levites and cried out with a loud voice to the Lord their God. Then the Levites, Jeshua, Cadmiel, Bani, Hashabniah, Sherebiah, Hodiah, Shebaniah, and Pethahiah said, Stand up and bless the Lord your God from everlasting to everlasting. Blessed be your glorious name, which is exalted above all blessing and praise. And Ezra said, You are the Lord, you alone. You have made heaven the heaven of heavens with all their host, the earth and all that is on it, the seas and all that is in them. To all of them you give life, and the host of heaven worships you. You are the Lord, the God, who chose Abram and brought him out of Ur of the Chaldeans and gave him the name Abraham. And you found his heart faithful before you and made with him a covenant to give to his descendants the land of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, the Jebusite, and the Girgashite. And you have fulfilled your promise, for you are righteous. 
and you saw the distress of our ancestors in Egypt and heard their cry at the Red Sea. You performed signs and wonders against Pharaoh and all his servants and all the people of his land, for you knew that they acted insolently against our ancestors. You made a name for yourself which remains to this day, and you divided the sea before them so that they passed through the sea on dry land, but you threw their pursuers into the depths like a stone into mighty waters. Moreover, you led them by day with a pillar of cloud and by night with a pillar of fire to give them light on the way in which they should go. You came down also upon Mount Sinai and spoke with them from heaven and gave them right ordinances and true laws, good statutes and commandments. And you made known your holy Sabbath to them and gave them commandments and statutes, and a law through your servant Moses. For their hunger you gave them bread from heaven, and for their thirst you brought water for them out of the rock, and you told them to go in to possess the land that you swore to give them. But they and our ancestors acted presumptuously, and stiffened their necks and did not obey your commandments. They refused to obey, and were not mindful of the wonders that you performed among them. But they stiffened their necks and determined to return to their slavery in Egypt. But you are a God ready to forgive, gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and you did not forsake them. Even when they had cast an image of a calf for themselves and said, This is your God who brought you up out of Egypt and had committed great blasphemies. You and your great mercies did not forsake them in the wilderness. The pillar of cloud that led them in the way did not leave them by day, nor the pillar of fire by night that gave them light on the way by which they should go. You gave your good spirit to instruct them, and did not withhold your manna from their mouths, and gave them water for their thirst. Forty years you sustained them in the wilderness so that they lacked nothing. Their clothes did not wear out, and their feet did not swell. And you gave them kingdoms and peoples, and allotted to them every corner. So they took possession of the land of King Sihon of Heshbon, and the land of King Og of Bashan. You multiplied their descendants like the stars of heaven, and brought them into the land that you had told their ancestors to enter and possess. So the descendants went in and possessed the land, and you subdued before them the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, and gave them into their hands, with their kings and the peoples of the land, to do with them as they pleased. And they captured fortress cities and a rich land, and took possession of houses filled with all sorts of goods, hewn cisterns, vineyards, olive orchards, and fruit trees in abundance. So they ate and were filled and became fat, and delighted themselves in your great goodness. Nevertheless, they were disobedient and rebelled against you and cast your law behind their backs and killed your prophets, who had warned them in order to turn them back to you, and they committed great blasphemies. Therefore, you gave them into the hands of their enemies who made them suffer. Then, in the time of their suffering, they cried out to you, and you heard them from heaven. And according to your great mercies, you gave them saviors, who saved them from the hands of their enemies. But after they had rest, they again did evil before you, and you abandoned them to the hands of their enemies, so that they had dominion over them. Yet when they turned and cried to you, you heard from heaven, and many times you rescued them according to your mercies, and you warned them in order to turn them back to your law. Yet they acted presumptuously and did not obey your commandments, but sinned against your ordinances, by the observance of which a person shall live. They turned a stubborn shoulder and stiffened their neck and would not obey. Many years you were patient with them and warned them by your spirit through your prophets, yet they would not listen. Therefore, you handed them over to the peoples of the lands. Nevertheless, in your great mercies, you did not make an end of them or forsake them, for you are a gracious and merciful God. Now, therefore, our God, the great and mighty and awesome God, keeping covenant and steadfast love, do not treat lightly all the hardship that has come upon us, upon our kings, our officials, our priests, 
our prophets, our ancestors, and all your people since the time of the kings of Assyria until today. You have been just in all that has come upon us, for you have dealt faithfully, and we have acted wickedly. Our kings, our officials, our priests, and our ancestors have not kept your law or heeded the commandments and the warnings that you gave them. Even in their own kingdom, and in the great goodness you bestowed on them, and in the large and rich land that you set before them, they did not serve you and did not turn from their wicked works. Here we are, slaves to this day, slaves in the land that you gave to our ancestors to enjoy its fruit and its good gifts. Its rich yield goes to the kings whom you have set over us because of our sins. They have power also over our bodies and over our livestock at their pleasure, and we are in great distress. Because of all this, we made a firm agreement in writing, and on that sealed document are inscribed the names of our officials, our Levites, and our priests. Chapter 10 Upon the sealed document are the names of Nehemiah the governor, son of Hakaliah, and Zedekiah, Sariah, Azariah, Jeremiah, Pasher, Amariah, Malchijah, Hattush, Shebaniah, Malach, Haram, Miramoth, Obadiah, Daniel, Genethon, Barak, Meshulam, Abijah, Majaman, Maaziah, Bilgai, Shemaiah. These are the priests. And the Levites, Jeshua, son of Azaniah, Benui of the sons of Henadad, Cadmiel, and their associates, Shebaniah, Hodiah, Kelita, Peleah, Hanan, Micah, Rehob, Hashabiah, Zakur, Sherebiah, Shebaniah, Hodiah, Bani, Beninu, the leaders of the people, Parash, Pehath Moab, Elam, Zatu, Bani, Bunai, Asgad, Bibai, Adonijah, Bigvi, Aden, Ater, Hezekiah, Azur, Hodiah, Hashem, Bezai, Harith, Anathoth, Nebai, Magpiash, Meshulam, Hezer, Meshezabel, Zadok, Jadua, Pelatiah, Hanan, Anaya, Hoshea, Hananiah, Hashab, Halohesh, Pilha, Shobek, Rehum, Hashabna, Maasea, Ahia, Hanan, Anan, Malach, Haram, and Baana. The rest of the people, the priests, the Levites, the gatekeepers, the singers, the temple servants, and all who have separated themselves from the peoples of the lands to adhere to the law of God, their wives, their sons, their daughters, all who have knowledge and understanding, join with their kin, their nobles, and enter into a curse and an oath to walk in God's law, which was given by Moses, the servant of God, and to observe and do all the commandments of the Lord our Lord and his ordinances and his statutes. We will not give our daughters to the peoples of the land or take their daughters for our sons. And if the peoples of the land bring in merchandise or any grain on the Sabbath day to sell, we will not buy it from them on the Sabbath or on a holy day. And we will forego the crops of the seventh year and the exaction of every debt. We also lay on ourselves the obligation to charge ourselves yearly one third of a shekel for the service of the house of our God. For the rows of bread, the regular grain offering, the regular burnt offering, the Sabbaths, the new moons, the appointed festivals, the sacred donations, and the sin offerings to make atonement for Israel and for all the work of the house of our God. 
We have also cast lots among the priests, the Levites, and the people for the wood offering to bring it into the house of our God by ancestral houses at appointed times year by year to burn on the altar of the Lord our God as it is written in the law. We obligate ourselves to bring the first fruits of our soil and the first fruits of all fruit of every tree year by year to the house of the Lord. Also to bring to the house of our God, to the priests who minister in the house of our God, the firstborn of our sons and of our livestock, as it is written in the law, and the firstlings of our herds and of our flocks and to bring the first of our dough and our contributions, the fruit of every tree, the wine and the oil to the priests, to the chambers of the house of our God, and to bring to the Levites the tithes from our soil, for it is the Levites who collect the tithes in all our rural towns. And the priest, the descendant of Aaron, shall be with the Levites when the Levites receive the tithes. And the Levites shall bring up a tithe of the tithes to the house of our God, to the chambers of the storehouse. For the people of Israel and the sons of Levi shall bring the contribution of grain, wine, and oil to the storerooms where the vessels of the sanctuary are, and where the priests that minister and the gatekeepers and the singers are. We will not neglect the house of our God. Chapter 11. Now the leaders of the people lived in Jerusalem, and the rest of the people cast lots to bring one out of ten to live in the holy city Jerusalem, while nine-tenths remained in the other towns. And the people blessed all those who willingly offered to live in Jerusalem. These are the leaders of the province who lived in Jerusalem. But in the towns of Judah all lived on their property in their towns. Israel, the priests, the Levites, the temple servants, and the descendants of Solomon's servants. And in Jerusalem lived some of the Judahites and of the Benjaminites. Of the Judahites, Athaiah, son of Uzziah, son of Zechariah, son of Amariah, son of Shephatiah, son of Mahalalel, of the descendants of Perez. And Maaseah, son of Barak, son of kol son of Hazaiah, son of Adaiah, son of Joyarib, son of Zechariah, son of the Shilonite. All the descendants of Perez who lived in Jerusalem were 468 valiant warriors. And these are the Benjaminites, Salu, son of Meshulam, son of Joed, son of Padaiah, son of Kaleah, son of Messiah, son of Ithiel, son of Jesheah, and his brothers, Gabai, Salai, 928. Joel, son of Zichri, was their overseer, and Judah, son of Hasanua, was second in charge of the city. Of the priests, Judea, son of Joyarib, Jachin, Sareah, son of Hilkiah, son of Meshula, son of Zadok, son of Mereoth, son of Ahitub, officer of the house of God, and their associates who did the work of the house, 822. And Adaiah, son of Jeroham, son of Peleliah, son of Amzai, son of Zechariah, son of Pashur, son of Malchijah, and his associates, heads of ancestral houses, 242. And Amashzai, son of Azarel, son of Azai, son of Meshillamoth, son of Emmer, and their associates, valiant warriors, 128. Their overseer was Zabdiel, son of Hagadolam. And of the Levites, Shemaiah, son of Hashab, son of Azrakam, son of Hashabiah, son of Bunai, and Shabbathai, and Josabad, of the leaders of the Levites, who were over the outside work of the house of God. And Mataniah, son of Micah, son of Zabdi, son of Asaph, who was the leader to begin the thanksgiving in prayer. And Bakbukiah, 
the second among his associates, and Abda, son of Shamua, son of Galal, son of Jaduthan. All the Levites in the holy city were 284. The gatekeepers, Akab, Talman, and their associates, who kept watch at the gates, were 172. And the rest of Israel and of the priests and the Levites were in all the towns of Judah, all of them in their inheritance. But the temple servants lived on Ophel, and Zaha, and Gishpah were over the temple servants. The overseer of the Levites in Jerusalem was Uzai, son of Bani, son of Hashabiah, son of Mataniah, son of Micah, of the descendants of Asaph, the singers in charge of the work of the house of God. For there was a command from the king concerning them, and a settled provision for the singers, as was required every day. And Pethahiah, son of Meshezabel, of the descendants of Zerah, son of Judah, was at the king's hand in all matters concerning the people. And as for the villages with their fields, some of the people of Judah lived in Kiriath Arba and its villages, and in Dibon and its villages, and in Jacabziel and its villages, and in Jeshua and in Moladah, and in Beth Pelet, in Hazar Shual, in Beersheba and its villages, in Ziklag and Makona and its villages, in in Rimon, in Zorah, in Jarmuth, Zanoa, Adullam and their villages. Lachish and its fields, and Azekah and its villages. So they camped from Beersheba to the valley of Hinnom. The people of Benjamin also lived from Geba onward at Michmash, Aijah, Bethel, and its villages. Anathoth, Nob, Ananiah, Hazor, Ramah, Gitaim, Hadid, Zeboim, Nebalat, Lod, and Ono the valley of artisans. And certain divisions of the Levites in Judah were joined to Benjamin. Chapter 12 These are the priests and the Levites who came up with Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, and Jeshua. Zoreah, Jeremiah, Ezra, Amariah, Malach, Hattush, Shechaniah, Rehum, Merimoth, Iddo, Genethoi, Abijah, Majaman, Maadiah, Bilgah, Shemaiah, Joyarib, Judea, Salu, Amok, Hilkiah, Judea. These were the leaders of the priests and of their associates in the days of Jeshua. And the Levites, Jeshua, Benuai, Cadmiel, Sherebiah, Judah, and Mataniah, who with his associates was in charge of the songs of thanksgiving. And Bakbakiah and Unno, their associates, stood opposite them in the service. Jeshua was the father of Joachim, Joachim the father of Eliashib, Eliashib the father of Joiada, Joiada the father of Jonathan, and Jonathan the father of Jadua. In the days of Joachim the priest, heads of ancestral houses were of Sareah, Mareah, of Jeremiah, Hananiah, of Ezra, Meshulam, of Amariah, Jehohanan, of Malukai, Jonathan, of Shebaniah, Joseph, of Haram, Adna, of Miriath, Helkai, of Iddo, Zechariah, of Genethon, Meshulam, of Abijah, Zikri, of Meniamon, of Modiah, Piltai, of Bilgah, Shamua, of Shemaiah, Jehonathan, of Joyarib, Matani, of Judea, Uzai, of Salai, Kali, of Amok, Eber, of Hilkiah, 
Hashabiah, of Judea, Nathanael. As for the Levites in the days of Eliashib, Joiada, Johanan, and Jadua, there were recorded the heads of ancestral houses, also the priests until the reign of Darius the Persian. The Levites, heads of ancestral houses, were recorded in the book of the annals until the days of Johanan, son of Eliashib. And the leaders of the Levites, Hashabiah, Sherebiah, and Jeshua, son of Cadmiel, with their associates over against them, to praise and to give thanks according to the commandment of David, the man of God, section opposite to section, Mataniah, Bakbakiah, Obadiah, Meshulam, Talman, and Akab were gatekeepers standing guard at the storehouses of the gates. These were in the days of Joachim, son of Jeshua, son of Josadak, and in the days of the governor, Nehemiah, and of the priest, Ezra, the scribe. Now at the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, they sought out the Levites in all their places to bring them to Jerusalem to celebrate the dedication with rejoicing, with thanksgivings, and with singing, with cymbals, harps, and lyres. The companies of the singers gathered together from the circuit around Jerusalem and from the villages of the Netophathites. Also from Beth Gilgal and from the region of Geba and Asmaveth. For the singers had built for themselves villages around Jerusalem, and the priests and the Levites purified themselves, and they purified the people and the gates and the wall. Then I brought the leaders of Judah up onto the wall and appointed two great companies that gave thanks and went in procession. One went to the right on the wall to the dung gate, and after them went Hoshea and half the officials of Judah, and Azariah, Ezra, Meshulam, Judah, Benjamin, Shemaiah, and Jeremiah, and some of the young priests with trumpets, Zechariah, son of Jonathan, son of Shemaiah, son of Mataniah, son of Micaiah, son of Zachor, son of Asaph, and his kindred, Shemaiah, Azarel, Malali, Gilali, Mai, Nathanael, Judah, and Hanani, with the musical instruments of David, the man of God. And the scribe Ezra went in front of them. At the fountain gate, in front of them, they went straight up by the stairs of the city of David, at the ascent of the wall above the house of David, to the water gate on the east. The other company of those who gave thanks went to the left, and I followed them with half of the people on the wall above the tower of the ovens to the broad wall and above the gate of Ephraim by the old gate and by the fish gate and the tower of Hananel and the tower of the hundred to the sheep gate. And they came to a halt at the gate of the guard. So both companies of those who gave thanks stood in the house of God and I and half of the officials with me. And the priests, Eliakim, Maaseah, Maniamin, Micaiah, Eloenai, Zechariah, and Hananiah, with trumpets, and Messiah, Shemaiah, Eleazar, Uzai, Jehohanan, Malchijah, Elam, and Ezer. And the singers sang with Jezrehiah as their leader. They offered great sacrifices that day and rejoiced, for God had made them rejoice with great joy. The women and children also rejoiced. The joy of Jerusalem was heard far away. On that day, men were appointed over the chambers for the stores, the contributions, the first fruits, and the tithes to gather into them the portions required by the law for the priests and for the Levites from the fields belonging to the towns. For Judah rejoiced over the priests and the Levites who ministered. They performed the service of their God and the service of purification, as did the singers and the gatekeepers, according to the command of David and his son Solomon. For in the days of David and Asaph long ago, there was a leader of the singers, and there were songs of praise and thanksgiving to God. 
In the days of Zerubbabel and in the days of Nehemiah, all Israel gave the daily portions for the singers and the gatekeepers. They set apart that which was for the Levites, and the Levites set apart that which was for the descendants of Aaron. Chapter 13 On that day they read from the book of Moses in the hearing of the people, and in it was found written that no Ammonite or Moabite should ever enter the assembly of God, because they did not meet the Israelites with bread and water, but hired Balaam against them to curse them. Yet our God turned the curse into a blessing. When the people heard the law, they separated from Israel all those of foreign descent. Now before this, the priest Eliashib, who was appointed over the chambers of the house of our God, and who was related to Tobiah, prepared for Tobiah a large room where they had previously put the grain offering, the frankincense, the vessels, and the tithes of grain, wine, and oil, which were given by commandment to the Levites, singers, and gatekeepers, and the contributions for the priests. While this was taking place, I was not in Jerusalem, for in the thirty-second year of King Artaxerxes of Babylon, I went to the king. After some time, I asked leave of the king and returned to Jerusalem. I then discovered the wrong that Eliashib had done on behalf of Tobiah, preparing a room for him in the courts of the house of God. And I was very angry, and I threw all the household furniture of Tobiah out of the room. Then I gave orders, and they cleansed the chambers, and I brought back the vessels of the house of God with the grain offering and the frankincense. I also found out that the portions of the Levites had not been given to them, so that the Levites and the singers who had conducted the service had gone back to their fields. So I remonstrated with the officials and said, Why is the house of God forsaken? And I gathered them together and set them in their stations. Then all Judah brought the tithe of the grain, wine, and oil into the storehouses. And I appointed as treasurers over the storehouses the priest Shelemiah, the scribe Zadok, and Pedaiah of the Levites, and as their assistant Hanan, son of Zakur, son of Mataniah, for they were considered faithful, and their duty was to distribute to their associates. Remember me, O my God, concerning this, and do not wipe out my good deeds that I have done for the house of my God and for his service. In those days I saw in Judah people treading wine presses on the Sabbath and bringing in heaps of grain and loading them on donkeys and also wine, grapes, figs, and all kinds of burdens which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I warned them at that time against selling food. Tyrians also, who lived in the city, brought in fish and all kinds of merchandise and sold them on the Sabbath to the people of Judah and in Jerusalem. Then I remonstrated with the nobles of Judah and said to them, What is this evil thing that you are doing, profaning the Sabbath day? Did not your ancestors act in this way, and did not our God bring all this disaster on us and on this city? Yet you bring more wrath on Israel by profaning the Sabbath. When it began to be dark at the gates of Jerusalem before the Sabbath, I commanded that the doors should be shut and gave orders that they should not be opened until after the Sabbath. And I set some of my servants over the gates to prevent any burden from being brought in on the Sabbath day. Then the merchants and sellers of all kinds of merchandise spent the night outside Jerusalem once or twice. But I warned them and said to them, Why do you spend the night in front of the wall? If you do so again, I will lay hands on you. From that time on, they did not come on the Sabbath. And I commanded the Levites that they should purify themselves and come and guard the gates to keep the Sabbath day holy. Remember this also in my favor, O my God, and spare me according to the greatness of your steadfast love. In those days also I saw Jews who had married women of Ashdod, Ammon, and Moab, and half of their children spoke the language of Ashdod, 
And they could not speak the language of Judah, but spoke the language of various peoples. And I contended with them, and cursed them, and beat some of them, and pulled out their hair. And I made them take an oath in the name of God, saying, You shall not give your daughters to their sons, or take their daughters for your sons, or for yourselves. Did not King Solomon of Israel sin on account of such women? Among the many nations there was no king like him, and he was beloved by his God, and God made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, foreign women made even him to sin. Shall we then listen to you and do all this great evil and act treacherously against our God by marrying foreign women? And one of the sons of Jehoiada, son of the high priest Eliashib, was the son-in-law of Sanballat the Horonite. I chased him away from me. Remember them, O my God, because they have defiled the priesthood, the covenant of the priests and the Levites. Thus I cleansed them from everything foreign, and I established the duties of the priests and Levites, each in his work. And I provided for the wood offering at appointed times and for the first fruits. Remember me, O my God, for good. We'd like to thank you for joining the FP Network today, where we are loving God, loving people, and treasuring Jesus together.